In this session, we'll be discussing about third photosynthetic protista member, which is euglenoids. So I've already mentioned you that euglenoids, they are the members of euglenophyta. Phyta, it's again for plants because they have the plants like feature. They will be having what you call the photosynthetic pigments to look forward for photosynthesis. The main member of this euglenophyta group is euglena. So we'll be discussing about the details of euglena also. Now when you talk about, they are basically present in fresh water, but apart from fresh water, they are also present in damp soil or in brackish water. I have already told you about brackish water. Brackish water has got more salinity than what you call the fresh water and less salinity than the saline water or the marine water. So they are found in all these three places. They are called plant animal, one of the very important feature that they, they behave like plants, they also behave like animals, so they are called plant animal. Now we need to understand what are the features which are making them plant-like and what are the features which are making them animal-like. When you talk about plant-like feature, they have the chloroplast because I've told you they are phyta, phyta means plant, so they must be doing photosynthesis. And for photosynthesis, they have chloroplast and the pigments in the chloroplast. So they have one feature which is common to plant and euglena, its presence of chloroplast. When you talk about next mode, which is holophytic mode of nutrition, when they have chloroplast, they will be making their own food. And the time they are making their own food, the synthesis of own food, it's called holophytic mode of nutrition. So they will have holophytic mode of nutrition. What are the features like animal, what you call, uh, what you know, animal organisms that they don't have cell, cell wall. I've already told you in dinoflagellates you were having the cell wall, in diatoms also you were having the cell wall. In dinoflagellate it was made up of cellulose and pactin, in diatoms it was made up of cellulose and silica. In euglena members you won't have cell wall. You don't have the cell wall, when you don't have the cell wall the outer layer will be cell membrane but cell membrane will have a cover. So the absence of cell wall is there, which is animal-like feature. They also divide longitudinally. In euglena, the longitudinally binary fission occurs, which is a feature of animals. So they divide by longitudinal binary fission. That's what they are considered as animal. And they have the animal-like feature. They have the plant-like feature. So they are also called plant animal. That is what I've told you. Now, they are also called producer, decomposer, protist. Now, what is that? I've told you that they have holophytic mode of nutrition so that they can prepare their food. So they are called producer. But the very time, let's suppose the light is not available, euglena, they behave like saprophytes. So always remember which very important thing that euglena are producer because they can behave like plants. They can make their own food. They are photosynthetic. But the very time light is not present, they won't die. They will consume the nutrients from some dead decaying matter and behave like saprophytes. So this side, this type of nutrition, it's called mixotropic modes of nutrition. Mixotropic means mixed level. Mixed level as in they also behave like photosynthetic protista. They also behave like saprophytic protista. So that is what they are called producer, decomposer, protista members. Now, when we move on to the next features, we'll be talking about because I've told you the cell wall is absent. When the cell wall is absent, the cell membrane has a particular layer and that la layer is called pellicle or periplast. The pellicle or periplast is very elastic in nature. There are flagella for locomotion. If you can to look here, there is a big flagella. But there are actually two flagella. If you can look, this is one flagella and the small one is one more flagella. This flagella and this flagella both are different. One is long, one is small. But the motility is just because of this large flagella. The small flagella doesn't have the role in motility. Now, both of the flagella are different in their sizes. So, when they are called heterocon flagellation uh, organisms. I've already told you in dinoflagellates, there were two flagella, if you remember. One was ribbon-like, one was smooth and narrow. And because of having two different flagella, dinoflagellates were called heterocon flagellation. So, in euglenoids, they will behave like heterocon flagellation. Now, when you talk about pigments, you remember I have told you that chlorophyll A is common to all photosynthetic proteins. So, they also have what you call chlorophyll A. When you talk about both of them, diatoms and dinoflagellates were having chlorophyll C. But here what you have is chlorophyll B. You have beta carotene here and you have diatoxanthin here. Now, what happens? like uh, you know i mean the reserve food material it's paramylum here and fat 
remember this particular thing that they have paramylum and fat paramylum is a reserve food most of the time they would ask you the food reserve of diatoms or food reserves of your granoids so food reserves of diatoms is chrysolaminarin and food reserves of euglenoids is paramylum they have a contractile vacuole which helps in osmoregulation they will have to regulate the osmotic pressure inside and have to move so for that they have a contractile vacuole i've already told you they they what you call divide with the help of longitudinally binary fission now what happens because they don't have cell wall let's suppose this is a nucleonoid this doesn't have cell wall this is a nucleonoid this doesn't have cell wall this is a nucleonoid it doesn't have cell wall during unfavorable condition all three of them will come close they'll come close and when they will come close they will secrete a mucilaginous layer which protects them from this what you call unfavorable condition and this particular stage is called pamela stage so pamela stage is formed during unfavorable condition now what happens when the favorable conditions will be coming the pamela stage will be going this particular pamela stage if we can talk about the pamela stage will all go and when that will all go all three of them will separate and behave like normal eukaryotes So next session will be detailing you about nuclear structure